here again for with this weekly musings and selections from the magic box. So let's see what the box has for us today. Oh no, not again. First of four questions. My first question is about what Barden said that if someone touches your body during astral travel, it can cause serious health problems or even death. But every astral traveler, including those who have gone through Barden's system, has refuted this. They claim that according to their experience, this is not true. So my question is, is it true? And why didn't Barden say that if it's not true? And if it is true, why does this happen after someone touches us? Is there the option to protect ourselves? Okay. <clears throat> this has to do with the degree of separation between the astromental bodies and the physical body. In general, most people when they astral travel do not achieve complete separation of the body. In the case of complete separation of the bodies to where there is no connection between the astromental body and the physical body other than the connection that maintains the livelihood of the physical body. Okay, so there's no, no connection of awareness between the two. If the body is touched, it can cause problems. The shock of the body and the, the immediate um, return of the astromental body can cause problems. However, most, like I said, most people do not achieve that degree of separation. Certainly not with Barden's technique. Okay? So Barden's technique is very safe in that it only achieves a certain separation. There is almost always some connection of awareness between the astromental body, which is out wandering, and a physical body. Okay, this is normal mental or astromental wandering. However, <clears throat> there are people who are so naturally gifted in astral wandering that they can uh, inadvertently achieve that degree of separation. So, hence Barden's warning. So, that, you know, he had no, no idea who is going to be reading his book, and what their level of ability may be. So, much better to put the warning in, and have one be cautious, and test it for themselves, than just blindly go about it and risk hurting themselves. Okay? So, to protect yourself from that occurrence, you maintain a mild or even larger than mild connection between the astromental body and the physical body. And this is a, a sensory connection, okay? <clears throat> question number two. My question is, if it is possible to mental astral travel, not only in the mac macrocosm, but into the microcosm too, like to our own inner world, and if you have any experiences what is the difference between these two travel methods? Maybe it's called lucid dreaming, but I don't know if it is the same thing. Okay, you're correct. Lucid dreaming and dreaming in general is an astromental travel inside of one's own psyche. Okay, it, 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 Everything occurs within one's own psyche in both lucid dreaming and actual dreaming. Now lucid dreaming can develop into actual astral wandering, but that is something more, okay? Um, that This is a problem that I have with lucid dreaming because it's all within one's own psyche. It is not astral travel, and a lot of people think of it as astral travel, and it's not true astral travel, okay? Um, third question. There are different opinions on the recommended ideal length of sleep 
Experts recommend five to six hours, 67 hours, 78 hours, or even more. Do you have any knowledge about the ideal length of sleep that you would like to share with us? In my opinion, the ideal length of sleep is the length that you, of sleep that you get when you go to bed and fall asleep and then when you wake up naturally without an alarm, okay? That gives you the natural length of sleep that you need in any given moment. It's always changing. There is no one set natural required amount of sleep. All bodies are different. We vary from day to day, week to week, month to month, year to year. Okay? So. Okay, fourth question. It's a rather long one. I wanted to ask about tarot cards, the I Ching, and similar tools. When a person shuffles a deck, asks a question, and draws a tarot card, for example, is there significance to the card being drawn in that moment, in that that particular card happened to be drawn instead of another one? What is the nature of that significance? Does that card hold a better answer to the question that was asked than any other card that could have been drawn? If you believe that the card that, has, that was chosen holds this kind of significance, how is it that just the right card happened to be drawn? How would the tarot deck or the universe, through the seeming randomness of the act of shuffling, move the card that was most needed to the top of the deck? If this synchrony that I am asking about exists, to what extent does this occur in other events we experience in our lives? If I were to sit down and ask a similar question to what I am asking the tarot, and then decide to open a random book, such as a dictionary, to a random page and randomly point to a part of the page, does that book give me an answer that would help me? Okay. All divination is founded on the intuition of the diviner. Doesn't matter what tool to divine you're using but we take a tarot card. It is completely random what tarot card you turn over. The universe is not conspiring to make sure that this the right tarot card turns over. So, what that means is you have a set of symbols and images and intellectual symbols that spur your intuition. Working with your subconscious mind and what it does with that symbolic input. So your intuition is directed, well not really directed by the symbols in the card, but it's ignited. The fire of your intuition is set aflame, if you will, by the imagery, by the symbology. Same with the I Ching or casting bones, or any form of divination that you use. Even pointing at a passage in a book blindly will work just as well. Because it's all about the diviner's intuition. And, you know, this is why you can encounter some readers, some diviners that are spot on, that really have their shit together and, you know, really get good answers. And others that are just leafing through a book of, that tells them what the card means and trying to figure it out. It's not a process of figuring it out. It's a spontaneous in function of the intuition. Okay? So, another four questions down. We'll see what the box brings us next week. Hopefully it will be just one question. Now, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments section below and I'll add them to the box and maybe someday we'll get to them. 
There are some down at the bottom here that have been here for quite a while, but we'll see. Whoever pops, it's, it's like the tarot. Ooh, whatever pops out, those are the questions that we're supposed to answer. Okay, so I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.